Finally, on the nutrition side, it seems obvious, but it's amazing how often this is overlooked. By definition, insulin resistance is a carbohydrate tolerance disorder. There are many people who, for whatever reason, don't want to understand that is true, and they tend to look at other things and say, no, insulin resistance occurs because there's fat in the muscle, and therefore it's a fat problem. And I fundamentally don't agree with that. And I think that anybody who's been on the front lines clinically taking care of patients will say insulin resistant patients generally respond better to carbohydrate restriction than any other form of restriction. They respond very well to calorie restriction as well, but calorie restriction by definition typically includes carbohydrate restriction. It doesn't necessarily need to be that extreme. It doesn't have to be a ketogenic diet and it doesn't have to be profound caloric restriction. But when a person is insulin resistant, their carbohydrate tolerance is lower than it should be. And we can use tools like CGM to basically figure that out. So rather than say, oh, everybody should be eating 100 grams a day or 50 grams a day or 150 grams per day, the answer is put a CGM on and find out. We set the standard, which says as long as the average blood glucose stays below this and the standard deviation, meaning the fluctuation of glucose stays below this, use that as your guide. And the most insulin resistant person might only be able to consume 50 or 75 grams of carbohydrates while staying in that range, while someone else might be able to consume 600 grams of carbohydrates while staying in that range. But using that tool then helps you start to course correct that. And as that number starts to come down and the insulin starts to come down and all these other things start to go, that's exactly what reversibility looks like. So let's quickly go over a case study of a patient. We'll include these numbers in the show notes. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth, exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following. Ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. Access to our private podcast feed. The Qualies, which are a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm-hmm.